bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. My name is Minister Red. And I'm the pastor here with Christ Our Life Ministries located in Augusta, Georgia on 308 Rose Street, directly behind the Walmart Lowe's on Bobby Jones Expressway, Interstate 520 heading west. I want to thank you for joining me for my Sunday morning service, amen, along with my members, Brother Roland and his beautiful wife, Sister Brittany Peachy, Sister Selena and her beautiful husband, Stan, my brother, Minister Harvey Cole and his beautiful wife, Sister Kimberly Cole, my brother, Harry Evans, amen, we want to continue to remember his wife, Sister Beverly Connors Evans, who went on to be with the Lord on March the 4th of last year. She was a pillar of this ministry. We love her. We miss her. We will never have a service and not acknowledge her. She's with the Lord in the name of Jesus. She's where we want to be. She's where we're trying to get in the name of Jesus. She was an example of how to live by faith not only to myself, but to everyone who met her while she was a visitor here on planet Earth. I want you to hear me again when I say that. She was only a visitor here. We are only visiting this planet. You think we're not visiting here? Oh, we're visiting. Because we're going to come out of this filthy, sinful Earth suit of ours and enter into an incorruptible body and then we will take up our residency on the new earth the eternal place in the name of jesus hallelujah the name of jesus I want to thank you for joining my sister church spirit of liberties ministries pastor by the phenomenal minister kenya king and his beautiful wife sister donna king they have services every sunday morning at 8 a.m and every Tuesday night at 7 p.m., y'all to join them and be blessed to hear a word from a mighty man of God teaching the word of God with clarity in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I am on YouTube. I am on YouTube. There are over 350 messages on my YouTube channel. You can listen to them anytime you want for free. Just type in Roderick Red. That is red with two D's. Hit the search button and you will see all my messages come up and you'll never hear me asking you for a dime in neither one of them because I don't do that. Because the ministry ain't about me asking you for money. It's about me making sure that you hear and receive the living word of God before your breath of life stops fellowshipping with your earthen vessel. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Today's message, part four. Part four of how to tell Christ's sheep from active sinners. How to tell Christ's sheep from active sinners. Our foundational verse today will come out of Revelation chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. It reads on this wise. I know thy works. That thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee, I will vomit thee out of my mouth. That is what the Lord says. Because thou art lukewarm. Notice. He's not saying because somebody else is lukewarm. No, he's saying because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. That verse is addressed to every born again believer that is not about the Father's business. And that verse is speaking to Pastor Red also. I might preach messages. You Every Thursday and every Sunday, I'm preaching the word of God, teaching the word of God. But let me make this perfectly clear. This thing, I received it before you received it from me. You receiving it from me ain't even receiving it at the pressure that I'm receiving it because when I receive it, I say, Good God Almighty, how guilty I am 
of this word that you're giving me to give to your people. Guilty am I of this word that you have anointed me with to give to your people. The messages I preach are conversations that I have with God about myself. So don't think that I'm talking about you. I'm telling you what me and God be talking about about me. And then you see if perchance this may be addressing you as well. He says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew, I will vomit thee out of my mouth. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we want to thank you for another opportunity to come before your presence and to tell you that we love you. We're nothing without you, but we're everything with you. Thank you for this word. Thank you for those that's going to join today's service to hear this word. Thank you for those that are not going to hear today's service to hear the word, but going to listen to it later on on my Facebook channel or on my YouTube channel. May this word bring a greater understanding to the hearer. May it shine light in the dark areas of their life that they have no clue that darkness resides there. Oh God, we love you. It might be my voice that they recognize and it might be my face that they know. But let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for joining me. I know thy works. That's what he says. Christ Church today. God bless you, Pastor King. I love you, my friend. Thank you for joining me. Nothing without you, but I'm everything with you. Christ Church today is full of born-again men and women, women living a baptized life as lukewarm believers. Living ignorant of the fact that lukewarmness in a spirit-filled life is the very thing that makes us active sinners. Notice I said us and not y'all. Lukewarmness in the life of a spirit-filled born-again believer is the very thing that makes us active sinners. Lukewarmness is passivity. I preached on it. I taught on it. All my messages is going to come back and be a full circle to each other. It's the way God has given them to me. Passivity is what lukewarmness is. It is living without active response or responsiveness to other people's way of living. Christians, lukewarm people, here, watch this Pastor King, lukewarm people don't really want to be saved from their lukewarmness. They only want to be saved from the penalty of lukewarmness. What is the penalty of lukewarmness? That he's going to vomit you out of his mouth. Oh yeah, mm -hmm, Pastor King, lukewarm people don't really want to be saved from their lukewarmness. They, they don't, oh man, they don't want to be saved. The children of Israel didn't want to be saved from Egypt. They just wanted to be saved from the penalty of bondage. 
They didn't want to be saved from bondage because if they wanted to be saved from bondage, then they would have never built the golden calf to go back to bondage. Lukewarm people. Luke, who is lukewarm people? People that's got a relationship with God. But don't do the works that God requires us to do as his children. Lukewarm people don't really want to be saved from their lukewarm. They, they, I mean, I mean, I mean they, they married, single people don't want to get married. They want to shack up and still want to be the number one choir director. They want to shack up and they still want to be the head of the usher board. They want to sack up or they want to teach Sunday school. They want to sack up but they want to be the, the, the voice. One of the number one voices in the church. Lukewarm people don't really want to be saved from their lukewarmness. They only want to be saved from the penalty of lukewarmness. Oh, in the name of Jesus. I know a lot of born-again believers who have no desire to be delivered from these groups on this slide. Born-again believers, I know the Masons, they don't want to be delivered from Masonry. Eastern Star, they don't want to be delivered from Eastern Star. Alpha Kappa Alpha, they don't want to be delivered from Africa. Omega Sapphire, they don't want to be delivered from Omega Sapphire. Uh, Phi Beta Alpha Alpha Beta Alpha They don't want to be delivered from Alpha Beta Alpha LGBTQ They don't want to be delivered from LG In Black NAACP Strong They don't want to be delivered from that Make America Great Again They don't want to be delivered from that They don't want to be delivered But it is these groups it is these groups that have caused them to be lukewarm believers. Because it causes them to be biased towards anybody that don't got nothing to do with them. But it's the definition of the word bias. Belief that someone's ideas are better than others that normally results in treating others unfairly when you as a born again believer if you treat somebody else unfairly you are lukewarm lukewarmness is sickness in a believer the reason why a person vomits the reason why a person errs, the reason why a person throws up is because there, 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 there's something in them that the body is rejecting and it don't want and it, and it, and it spits it out. Lukewarmness is sickness in a believer. When a person is sick but does not know they are sick, their life can be in danger. In Christ's lukewarmness will get you spewed out of his mouth. Three, verse 16. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Why? Why? Because you are active but you are not spiritually active. You are carnally active. And what's making you carnally active is them thoughts that have got you going a way that ain't supposed that you ain't supposed to be going. Isaiah 55, 8, 9. Pastor King was in that chapter this morning beautifully talking about when King Uriah died and what Isaiah saw in the name of Jesus. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. 
Carnal thoughts make a born again believer lukewarm. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Any believer living by carnal thoughts is an active sinner. What is an active sinner? It is a lukewarm believer of Jesus Christ. That's all it is. I brought it full circle. An active sinner is a lukewarm believer in Jesus Christ. What, 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 what makes me say that? We're going to get there. I'm going to define it for you. Any believer of what? Any believer of what? Of the living word of God. Why? Because the living word of God is, according to Hebrews 4 and 12, is alive and active. See, see, Pastor Red is a sinner. I will always be a sinner. But the problem is, is when Pastor Red starts living by and talking the word of God, which is alive and active, then I become an, uh, an alive and active sinner. Now the question is, the alive and active sinner that I am, am I going to be lukewarm? Because God is a consuming fire. Everything about God is hot. It's not lukewarm. The living word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. The living word of God. Oh, oh Pastor King, we all sinners, my friend. And, and Pastor King, if, if we... If we will just not allow nothing about us to make us think that we are not sinners, then we can get this. The problem, the, the problem why born again believers are defeated today is because they completely think that they're not sinners anymore. When we are, the question is, is are you an active sinner? Or are you an active believer? The living word of God is alive and active. So the question is, is, is it active in you? Is the living word of God active in you? If it is, then why are you living lukewarm? Why are you living a biased life? You know what a biased life is? A, a, you know, a bias, anybody... Hear me now, you ain't going to hear this probably nowhere else. And if you do, you'll hear it after, you, you'll get an understanding of it later. Bias, lukewarm living, is what politicians do. If you are a person caught up in the politics, then you are a lukewarm, biased person. Even if you don't believe me, feel free to get off my Facebook page and get off my YouTube channel whenever you're ready because I, can, I know y'all are going to fight that. But what do you think, what do you think bias is? If, if the definition of bias ain't what we mean by politics, then, then I don't know what it means. Bias. Believe that someone's ideas are better than others that normally will result in treating others unfairly. January the 6th did not happen because people were not biased. Slavery did not happen because people were not biased. It happened because they were biased. These police killing all these civilians it's happening because they're biased. It ain't got nothing to do with with them breaking the breaking the committing the crime, breaking the law. Committing a crime and breaking the law puts you in jail. It don't put you six feet on the ground. 
if the living word of God is active in you, then why are you living a lukewarm life? I'll tell you why. Passivity. God bless you, Sister Selene. I love you. Thank you for joining your pastor this morning. I'll tell you why a lot of born-again believers today is living a lukewarm life. Passivity. Passivity. You better go back and listen to my messages on the danger of passivity. Passivity is acceptance of what happens without active response or resisting. So if the living word of God is active in you, why are you lukewarm? Because Pastor King, when them two disciples walked with Jesus on the road, and then Jesus ate with him and broke bread with him, and then he disappeared with him, and, 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 uh, and the next words out of their mouth was, did not our hearts burn within us as he spoke to us? When the living word of God is speaking to you, you should be fire shut up in the bones, not lukewarmness. Fire makes nothing lukewarm. Fire makes stuff hot. Passivity. Living without active response. Living without active response. Because you are too lukewarm to stand up to sin. Too lukewarm to stand up to sin. Too lukewarm to stand up to the bias that's taking place not only in the world but in the church. You're lukewarm. You, 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 you say something here and then you won't say nothing there. The, the, the number one thing you got to understand as a born again active believer of God is you going to say the living word of God and know that that ain't you. It's just the living word of God. Whether you're living it or not, you, man, you still, you, you say it. It's active. It's active. Pastor King, me and you, we don't, we don't play uh, NBA basketball, but we talk it because, because, because we got a fervency for it. So we talk it. We don't play the NFL, but we, but we, we fervent, I'm fervent for them Carolina Panthers and you, you fervent for them Atlanta Falcons. We, so we talk, we ain't lukewarm about the Carolina Panthers. We're going to win the Super Bowl every year until we don't win it. The Lord said, here we go, watch this. We, uh, the, we, I'm sticking with the foundational verse today. The Lord said, I know your works. I know what you believe. I know what you do. I know how you conduct yourself. I know everything about you. I know that you are neither cold nor hot. I know that. That's the Lord saying that. It is better to be either cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. The Lord knows you by your works. What does James 2 and 26 say? James 2 and 26 says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Oh yeah, I know you got a bunch of faith. I know, I, you better have faith. God has dealt every man a measure of faith. We know you got faith. The question is, do you got the works that make them faith, to make that faith be active? Do you got it to make your faith, to make it powerful? To make it productive or action or, or, or movement? Do, do, you, do you got the thing to make your faith move? Them works. Do you believe? Do you believe enough to speak 
the word of God, to live the word of God, to not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the word of God. The Lord knows you by your works, not by your giving, not by your sacrificing. He knows you by your work. He knows you by, by how, you, how much you believe when, this, when, the, when the test of your faith is put on trial. We can run around. Notice that's why I said I always make sure I keep this thing plural because I want to make sure that all of y'all people that think I'm judging y'all, I want to make sure that you understand that, that plural means is, is more means all of us. We we means me too. It's a it's not a a, a W and an M is the same letter. They just flipped upside down from a me to a we. All you're doing is flipping the M. From me to we, it's the exact same letter. We can run around talking about being saved all we want. But the Lord knows our works. He knows our works. Watch this right here. Matthew 24 and 12. Look what Matthew 24 and 12 says. He Jesus, this is Jesus speaking. Jesus says, because lawlessness, because lawlessness is increased. Oh, and lawlessness is increased today. I'm going to tell you that now. Because lawlessness is increased, most people, most, this is where you got to catch this, because this, this is Matthew chapter 24, verse 12, go, explains Revelation chapter 3 verse 15 through 16. It, 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 this word explains it at. He says most people most people's love most people's love love means love, love is fervency. Love is hotness. When you love somebody you, you, you burn for that thing. You burn. Why, why do you think uh, men, people get raped. Why do you think uh, people, it's it, it burning in them to do something? Lukewarmness ain't gonna make you do nothing. Most people's love will grow cold. Most people's love will grow cold. This is what Jesus is saying. Now let me put Matthew chapter 24 verse 12 Inside of Revelation 3, 15, 16, Jesus says, most people's love will grow cold. That means your love, the love goes from hot to cold. But that's why he said most people, he didn't say all people. And the reason why he says most people and not all people is because you got born again believers who stop at lukewarmness. He said their love going to go from from. They, the love is going to grow cold. The love was hot. And then it goes straight to cold. Rather than stopping in the middle. And look, well, I wish that you was hot or cold. I wish because most people's love will grow cold. Your love don't grow you, you Your love don't grow cold. You know why your love don't grow cold? Because you're biased. Because you have a belief that someone's out there, and, 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 and you're, you're lukewarm for that belief than others that, that normally results in treating others unfairly with your lukewarm self. Matthew 7, 22 through 23. On that day, Many will say to me, many who? The lukewarm, luke, lukewarm of uh, active sinners, a uh, lukewarm believer of Jesus Christ. On that day, many active sinners. What makes us active sinners? We, we know the living word of God. See, Ephesians 2 and 1 says, and you have he made alive. How? 
the word of God is living and active. You have been made who were dead in trespasses. It, it, see, it's one thing to be dead in a, a person dead in trespasses and in sin. We call them atheists. You ain't no atheist. If you ain't an atheist, then you ain't dead. And if, if you got any, if you say, if you do anything about Jesus Christ, if you if you do anything around Easter, if you do anything around Christmas, if you do anything that that that, that that's associated to the to, to church living, then you are, then you know the active living word of God. If you have been baptized in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, if you've been baptized, then you are an active sinner. Pastor Red is a sinner, but I've been, I'm no longer dead in my trespasses and in sin. Active sinners are people that are alive in their trespasses and in sins. That's what an active sinner is, a person that's alive in trespasses and in sins. You, 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 you're just doing it. I wish that you was cold or hot. Most people's love will grow cold. Christ didn't even say that they was going to stop and be lukewarm for a while. He said it, it was going to go from hot to cold. But because you look warm, you 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 straddle you straddle the fence. But on that day, but on that day, you're gonna say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? I'm gonna tell you something right now. A person that's dead in trespasses and in sins ain't gonna be prophesying in his name. And cast out demons in your name. A person dead in trespassing and in sins ain't going to cast out no demons in his name. And do many mighty works in your name. A person dead in trespassing and in sins ain't going to do no mighty works in his name. Then will I declare to them, I never knew you. I wonder why. I wonder why. I know your works. That you are neither cold nor hot. Because I, I never knew you because you was lukewarm. Because I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I, you know, I, I didn't know, I didn't know if you was a, an Atlanta Falcon fan or a Panther fan. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. I, I, I didn't know if you was a Laker fan or you was a Chicago Bull fan. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't, you, you, you don't know. I don't know. I don't know who you pull for. I, I mean, this, I mean, yesterday you wore a, a, a Panther jersey in, and the next day you wore in a Philadelphia Eagle jersey just because they went to the Super Bowl. I mean, make up your mind. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded man is a lukewarm man. Oh, yeah, Brother King, Pastor King. Oh, yeah, I know your works, but I don't know you. There you go. See that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pastor King. I don't, here's what he says. I, I never knew you. I knew what you was doing, but I didn't know you. I'm pretty, Pastor King, I'm pretty sure LeBron James can say, yeah, 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 Pastor King, I, I know you was good in basketball in high school. I know you was good in basketball in the Army. I know that you was good in basketball back home. I know you was good in basketball whenever you went on to, to play basketball on the basketball court. But I, I, but I never knew you. I never knew you. Pastor Red knew you. I don't know you. I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. There we go, Pastor King. What makes born again believers workers of lawlessness? Lukewarmness. Back to Matthew 24 and 12. Because lawlessness is increased. 
Not most people's love will grow cold. Lawlessness has to do with the loss of obedience. In lukewarmness in a believer's life will kill them. We have to stay fervent with our belief in the living word of God. If the United States in the 90% of the United States wants to open their arms to LGBT trans living, I tell you, I'm not going to turn lukewarm. Supporting that means you are a lukewarm active sinner. Supporting any organization means that you are a lukewarm active sinner. You can, you can play around with this lukewarm sickness. You can play with it. You can, you can, you can, you can disagree with this message. You can, you can not like what you've heard so far. But I did not say that I knew your works. I did not say that I was going to spew you out of my mouth. I'm telling you what the Lord is saying to you. If you call yourself a born again believer, I'm telling you, you are an active Sinner, you are a lukewarm, a lukewarm believer in Jesus Christ for being in agreement with ideas that they think are better than God's ideas that normally results in treating true born again believers unfairly. Because they want us to believe at the fervency level they're at. And they want us to become lukewarm. They still want us to stay born again believers because they, they want us to love them. They want us to love them. They, they don't want us to go straight cold. See, God says, Jesus, I, I wish that you was cold. I wish that your love for that lifestyle would grow cold. See, Paul was, Saul was very fervent for the law of Moses. He wasn't lukewarm. He wasn't lukewarm. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Maybe the other scribes and Pharisees might have been lukewarm, but not Saul. Saul was breathing out threatenings against the church the way he went to the high priest and got some letters that he may go persecute them. Because when you are fervent for something, God can break you. When you're dead, God can break you. When you're lukewarm, God wasting his time. See, God got to catch you at a, at a point where you're, where you're either on fire or you're cold. You know when God caught me? You know when God saved me? God saved me when I was, when I was in the heat of, of adultery against Deli. He caught me in the heat of adultery. That's when God called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. If God would have caught me hot for Deli, but just dibbling and dabbling around with a, with adultery. Mm -mm, no, 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 no. I was I was hot in adultery when God called when God called me out. When God called me. Loving D but loving adultery too. 
See that's what you, see that's what y'all don't see that's what y'all don't know about Pastor Red. I, I will tell you about me. If 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 that's what it takes to get you to understand what I mean when I talk about living lawless and having a lukewarm lifestyle, if that's what I gotta do, if I gotta if I gotta if I gotta shit. The covering of, of, of what I used to be to do it, then I gladly do it. Because I got to let you know that if you if you're going to if you're going to stay lukewarm, God can't do nothing for you. If, if you're going to keep shacking up, God can't do nothing for you. If you're going to keep pulling for political parties, God can't do nothing. If, if, you, if you're going to stay in, in these organizations, God can't do nothing for you. Here we go. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord, and she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass. See, 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 Abel was a keeper. See, let me, Abel fellowship with God's people. Look, I'm going to take that and I'm going to put that in, in the church today. Abel fellowship with God's people and God's people only. He kept, that's what I do. I'm a pastor. I'm a, I'm a keeper of sheep. Abel was a tiller of the ground. Abel went out there and hung out with carnally minded worldly people. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Cain was an active sinner. What, 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 what made he, because he, he brought an offering to the Lord. You, I'm a, you got, Pastor King, you got sinners, people dead in trespasses and in sin. You, they ain't giving the church nothing. They ain't giving God nothing. They ain't giving a man or woman of God nothing. They ain't giving that man standing out on the street corner with that piece of cardboard in his hand saying, can you give a little something I'm hungry? They ain't giving nothing. Cain brought her the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought her the furtherings of his flock and of the fat thereof. Both of them fervent for God. One of them not bringing the wrong, th the right thing. And because he wasn't bringing the right thing, he became biased towards his younger brother. Abel also brought her the first things of his flock and of the fat there. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. You see, that's what I'm trying to say. You see, I'm going to tell you something right now. You got born again believers, active sinners. They don't got no respect for my messages. They don't respect my messages. No, because my message ain't because my message ain't ain't like T D Jakes. My message ain't like Charles Stanley. My message ain't like Jamal Bryant. My message ain't like Billy Graham. My message ain't like Oral Roberts. My message ain't like Kenneth Copeland. My message ain't like Adrian Rogers. My message ain't like Noel Jones. We ain't got no respect for your message, Pastor Red. You are nobody. Don't nobody know who you are. You just some guy that come on Facebook every Thursday and every Sunday. You don't wear suits. We don't. We don't. You ain't. You, you ain't got a, a bunch of followers. We ain't respecting your messages. But under Cain, 
and to his offering, the Lord had no respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? I'm going to tell you why. Lukewarmness. Lukewarmness. You know, but he, 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 he wasn't. He wasn't hot to do it Abel's way, but he wasn't cold not to give God an offering. To see that the Lord respected Abel's offering came chose rather to get mad at his brother because his brother was hot for God. So when we talk Cain and Abel, we're talking hotness versus lukewarmness because Cain was not cold. Because if Cain would have been cold, then Cain wouldn't have never gave an offering unto the Lord. Cain wouldn't have never had a mind to do anything for God. See, 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 you got a mind. You, 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 you got a mind to get up, to go to church. You ain't, you ain't got a mind to read your Bible every day, though. What, Phil? Uh, I'm a... I'm at, where, where that Pastor King? They asked for it, right there. It is, right there. It is. I, I get get one of these. Get you a mirror. Get you a mirror and look at that mirror. Then, then and then ask us. Look in the mirror and ask it. Do I do I read my Bible every day? Do I do I do me and God have a a fervent conversation every day or do we or is it just a lukewarm do do I just do a little old lukewarm prayer do I just do a little old lukewarm reading my daily bread reading a little page of a daily bread do my morning uh my morning uh devotion to God for 15 minutes and then for the rest of the 23 hours in 45 minutes, I live lukewarm. Oh, no, 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 stay with the mirror. Stay with, stay with the mirror now. Stay with the mirror. Answer, answer that question for yourself. That's the question you got to answer for yourself. But I take that dog on mirror. You, I'm a, you better not look in this mirror because that the mirror don't lie. That thing, that, that person in that mirror. I'm going to tell you something right now. The reason why I preach mirror is because when you look, you cannot tell. Who up? Get a mirror and tell me if you see Pastor Red in that mirror when you look in it. I tell you, you will not see me in your mirror. And the person that you see in that mirror will tell you whether or not you are a lukewarm believer of Jesus Christ. Whether or not you are an active sinner professing to be saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled when you know you ain't on fire for nothing of God. But you're on fire for masonry. You're on fire for Eastern Star. You're on fire for the Republican Party. You're on fire for the Democratic Party. You're on fire for... Uh, the NAACP. You're on fire for black make a uh, bl uh, make a uh, black Black Lives Matter. You're on fire for the LGBTQ. You're on fire for them. You're on fire for the Baptist Church. You're on fire for the Church of God in Christ. You're in, you're on charge of the uh, of the um, Catholic Church. You're on fire for the uh, for the Pentecostal Church. But you know what though? You are a member. You are a member of the Laodicean church. You are a member of the Laodicean church. Because that's who, that's who the Lord was talking to here. That's who he was talking to here. Right here. 
I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. So you need to make sure the next time somebody asks you what church you're a member of. Oh, I'm a member of the Lay of the Season Church. Make sure you make sure they know what church you're from. Say, say, say I, I didn't just, I, you know, I, I, I've never heard of the Lay of the Season Church. And they said, well, all you got to do is read Revelation uh, chapter 3, verse um, 12. Starting at verse 12, you get, you, you're fine. You, you, you'll find us. You know, because in, in the seven churches that, that Christ addressed in, uh, in Revelation, uh, I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't see a church in there called the Baptist Church. I didn't see a church in there called the Church of God in Christ. I didn't see a church in there called the Lutheran Church. I, I didn't see a church in there called the Holy Trinity. I want to make sure that, that as a pastor that I make sure that you know exactly which church you are in in uh, Revelation. How to tell Christ's sheep from active sinners. Lukewarmness. They are too busy doing carnally minded mess. Too busy doing a carnally minded mess. Jesus says, I must be about my father's business. You want to know why many of today's born again believers are not about Christ's father's business? Lukewarmness. Lukewarmness because they passive. They live without active response or resistance to sin. That's why you're not about the Father's business. Everybody in Israel was passive towards Goliath. Except for David. Everybody in Babylon was passive to King Nebuchadnezzar, except for the three Hebrew boys. Everybody. Are you going to be a passive? Believer of Jesus Christ, or are you going to set on fire every sinful work that you find yourself in spiritual warfare against? Or are you going to be lukewarm and be like Lot's wife? And want to just stay there. I can tell you. The same pressure. That was on Lot's wife. Was on Lot and his two daughters. Everybody. Could see. In Lot's family. Everybody could hear in Lot's family. Everybody could feel in Lot's family. But his wife was the only one that looked back. Everybody came into the presence of fine garments in gold and silver when they went into Jericho. God knew they was going to come into fine linen and gold and, and stuff. 
So he told Joshua, tell the people when they enter into Jericho not to take or touch of the accursed thing. So the question is, is how did Achan get into Jericho? How did any of the children of Israel get into Jericho? I'm going to tell you how. Works. That works got them in. That works got them in. Because Joshua told him, oh, you know, we're going to accomplish the city, but nobody better not say nothing. They did it for six days. They walked around. Nobody opened their mouth. They was fervent. Nobody was lukewarm to where they opened their mouth and said, nobody said nothing. And then on the seventh day, Joshua told them to raise up the trumpets, raise up the, and, and lift up your voice with a, with a shout of praise. And they took all this fervency on that seventh day and the walls of Jericho fell through the praises of God. Because they did it according to the Father's business. Today, the church is not doing it according to the Father's business because we have become lukewarm. We have become passive believers. We're afraid to tell the world that they are living dead in trespasses and sins. 90% of y'all listening to me today are lukewarm believers. You want to get confirmation on that, get one of these. I watch this. Put myself in that 90% number. I'm trying to get with the 10%. I I put myself in the 90% number. I'm going to say that again. 90% of the people listening to this message today, to include Pastor Red, are lukewarm believers. We live passively to people. This message comes by way of God to tell us that when he spews us out of his mouth, It ain't because we're not going to know why he spewed us out of his mouth. When he says, depart from me, you workers of lawlessness, I never knew you. You're going to know why He says that to you. Because I can tell you this right now. I know I'm going to know why. 
because the anointing on my life is so powerful I just don't feel like dealing with people's mess I would prefer to just leave them alone and let them go on and die in their trespasses and in sin than to deal with the headache of being talked about. But was not Christ talked about? Was not Christ hated? Was not Christ beaten? Pastor Red ain't there yet. I'm asking y'all for prayer that I will match the anointing on my life with my living. I need my living to match the anointing on my life. Because I know that I cannot look in this mirror and honestly with a good conscience say that I do not live lukewarm some days. I know that I do. He says, I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. Humanity lives in an intermediate state, in a lukewarm state between good and evil dominated by the passion. You want to know how to tell Christ's sheep from active sinners? Look at their works. See what they believe. Find out just how strong they are when it comes to Telling people the truth because Sister Selena, oh Sister Selena, I'm gonna tell you we're gonna we're gonna pray for each other, Sister Selena. That's Sister Selena. We gotta pray for each other. I'm 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 gonna I'm, uh, uh, Brother King, Sister Pastor King, Sister Selena. Oh, you know what? The, you know what God? I'm gonna tell you what God kills me. God comes in and God says, "Son, all all I want you to do is tell them the truth." I, I, God says, God says, the, re the reason why you won't tell them the truth is because you, because you, you don't want to mess up the friendship. God says, the only thing that I'm asking born again believers is that whatever it is about me that you're hot for. Talk that to the people that are not that hot when they come up to you not as hot as you are when it comes to my business. That's all I ask you to do. Ain't that, guys, I ain't asking you to do nothing else. That's all I'm asking you to do. That's all I'm asking you to do. All I'm asking you to do is, is, is if, they, if they say, bow down or, or I'm going to throw you in the fiery furnace, I'm just saying, I know I'm not going to do it. <clears throat> We're going to support the LGBT movement, not going to do it. Support the Democratic Party, support the Republican Party, not going to do it. Not about my father's business. Do, or, 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 or do we even 
Or do we even know what the Father's business is? Do we even have a clue what the Father's business is? I'm going to make it real simple for you what the Father's business is. The Father's business is to receive his son as life. Let him do the living for you. Let him, doing the, let him do the talking for you. Let him do the thinking for you. Do not lean to your own understanding. Trust in him with all your heart. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. All we got to do is just speak the word and live the word that we speak. Because a liar ain't nothing but somebody that never catches up to the words that they speak. Thank you for joining me today. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, your word went forth. Your word went forth not just to them, but to me as well. Acknowledging before them that Pastor Red also lives lukewarm at times. They need to come to understand that us pastors ain't no better than them. And if they think we're better than them, then that is what they're thinking. It's not what we're thinking. Because I am no better than the people that hurt me today. I am no more holier than the people that hurt me today. I'm no more anointed than the people that hurt me today. We get this concept that... that, 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 that the pastors and, and uh, is more anointed than than uh, than than others when we're not. The only difference is, if it's anything, is we're just harder than them, not more anointed than them. A twenty dollar bill is a twenty dollar bill. The spirit of God is the spirit of God. As powerful as. Sister Selena's $20 bill is, is as powerful as my $20 bill. The spirit of Christ that she has is the same spirit of Christ that I got in the name of Jesus. God, help us to better understand that we are no greater than anybody else. There is nobody in the body of Christ greater or more anointed than anybody. Eliminate the lukewarm living of thinking that pastors should be receiving something that the other members ain't receiving. We all receive eternal life. And that is all I'm after. I'm not, I'm not after money, I'm not at the church growth, I'm not at the fame and fortune, I'm after eternal life. Because I could die tomorrow. And everything that people bless this ministry with that I've obtained down here on planet earth is going to go to somebody else. And then I'm going to go and stand before the judgment seat of Christ and to be judged by the works that I've done. Every man's work shall be made manifest, be made manifest, for it be revealed by fire, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Every man's works shall be made manifest. May the works that I do be pleasing in your sight it's in the mighty name of jesus that we pray amen and amen god bless you thank you for joining me today i'll see you tuesday night with pastor king we love you spirit of liberties ministries and christ our life ministries is nothing without y'all 
I speak for Pastor King and I speak for myself. We study the word of God and we show up Tuesday nights and Thursday nights and two times on Sunday because we're fervent for the word of God and making sure that y'all receive the word of God without us hounding y'all for finances. God bless all of you. The, my and my members here at Christ Our Life Ministries, Pastor King, Sister King, and the members there at Spirit of Liberty's Ministries, we love you all. God bless you. Amen and amen.